Good evening, I'm Jane Fay and I'm here right now to talk to you about the media in the UK and to tell you a little bit about some of the things that Transmedia Watch are doing to make media coverage less awful for trans people. Uh, you're about to get a slideshow but I thought you'd like to see who's behind the slideshow beforehand. So without further ado, here we go. Today's presentation is prepared for the Consortium AGM, but it still counts at other times, so if you can get some use out of it, please do. Already told you, I'm Jane Fay, and uh, just to annoy sub-editors everywhere, I tend not to capitalise my name. And I'm a writer, I'm an occasional comedian, a professional nuisance because I do like to complain about stuff, and the chair of Transmedia Watch. And here I am on behalf of Transmedia Watch. What we are is a charity who see our role as making sure that trans and intersex people and issues are represented with accuracy, dignity and respect. We will do things like produce the occasional style guide, but that's mostly not what we do. We're about having conversations, we're about talking to the media about what works, what doesn't work, and uh, sorry about that, and uh, about uh, trying to do better, trying to do better without hurting people. So we do research, we would love to do a lot more. We consult with organisations, we read scripts, we talk about use of words, tone, language and so on. We do some lobbying, uh, we are probably a lot more active behind the scenes than you would know. Well. Of course that's the case uh, and we also do training and I think the polite way to put it is if you are a mega corporate then please pay us loads and we'll come and train you and if you are a struggling charity then we're quite happy to come along and deliver training for free if need be or for a small donation in other words we fit what we do to who we're dealing with I'm going to give you a very short canter through the media. Uh, I call it guerrilla media. It's the press run amok and in the UK that is absolutely the case nowadays. The press have gone completely amok. Sorry I'm not doing well with words today. Here is and, and I'm going to slightly challenge my own figures but these are translated articles derived from a scrape of the press on Google over the last 10 years. So the left hand side of that scale is 2012 and the right hand side is 2022. The absolute numbers I would say are subject to debate. There's things like different issues of the same article, there's different versions of the same paper and so on. But the patterns, the patterns are what matter and what is very clear is that we rose from a situation in 2012 where there were something like 60 articles per year about trans people in the UK press, 60, to last year when we're looking at 6,000. That is a hundredfold increase. If you look at who is responsible for that, then three titles accounted for 3,900 largely hostile articles since 2020. That's 38% of the total, that's the Times, the Mail and the Telegraph. That's over 118 articles a month, 27 articles a week or nearly four articles a day, all focused on approximately 0.1% of the population. I say that because although the recent census puts the transgender proportion of the population at slightly more than that, the actual proportion of the population that they focus on because they're obsessed with trans women is smaller, much smaller. Also bringing up the rear there is The Guardian and The Guardian despite its reputation as a liberal paper really isn't. If you look at trans related articles per 30 days the peak we hit this year what's interesting is we do seem to have come back off the peak but the peak was over a thousand in a month, over a thousand. And the peak week does appear to be the 11th of July 2022. 
123 articles on trans topics from the Mail, Times and Telegraph in a week, mostly hostile. And on one day, one particular day, 11 from the Telegraph, and then another day, 11 from the Mail, and then 10 from the Times. This is not journalism. This is absolutely obsession. And that's the problem. I'm not here going into broadcast media because that's a whole other can of worms. But they're not much better, apart from because they're subject to Ofcom. They are perhaps slightly better moderated. Slightly, not much. I was asked to say what we would like the press to do. How can they do better? The result was a list of about half a dozen things to fix. I really object to the way people talk about trans issues. I mean, it would be great if we were talking about trans issues, because trans issues for me are issues of trans health care. They're issues around trans people bullied at school or trans people kicked out of their jobs because they're trans. Those are trans issues. We don't see trans issues in the press. What we see are cis concerns and panics. Cis people concerned about trans people going to the loo. Well, I'm sorry, but a trans person in the loo is no more a trans issue than a woman going to the loo is a woman's issue or a man going to the loo is a man's issue. These are obsessions. Part of the problem is that journalists just frame all discourse that centres trans people as two sides. It's always trans versus the rest. They wouldn't take that approach to other minorities. They wouldn't, I hope they wouldn't, be asking gay people, Jewish people, black people into a studio and asking them to defend their existence. They would understand that the world is much more than a simple binary. And yet, and yet that is what they do with trans people. And these are confected binaries. It's trans versus women. The majority of women support trans people on most issues, yet we don't hear from them. Why are we seeing a debate between somebody trans and somebody who's a woman when quite often the more appropriate debate is between two species, two camps of women? It's simplification. It's turning something complex into something that isn't. It's therefore not representing what is going on in the world today. This is a continuation of that loading the bases that we see. The media see lose always framed as trans versus someone else with no acknowledgement whatsoever of other perspectives. And that is truly problematic. I've produced podcasts which have featured women concerned about lose. They're concerned about the overall provision. They're concerned about safety. They're concerned about women of colour being excluded from lose. They're concerned about butch women having problems using lose. In other words, there are a whole host of issues around Luz, and these are issues that cis women have to deal with on a daily basis. But the only issue, the only issue the media seem remotely interested in is trans versus women. That has to stop. And again, researchers, and, and, and this goes a bit more to broadcast, they're constantly seeking to produce the most loaded dichotomy rather than seek expert views from expert organisations. What I mean by that is that the staple of a very great deal of broadcast is something hits the print media and for the next 24 hours you're getting phone calls from researchers saying would someone like to come into the studio to discuss this and they're not consulting a list of experts and getting experts in. They are going to the first trans person they can find on Twitter and ringing them up on the basis of their following or their controversiality or just that they've been in a TV studio before. This is absolute nonsense. Twitter is not a source of expertise. It is a source of sensation. And, of course, that is exactly what these people are looking for. Last, but by no means least, is trans as the enemy of free speech. Because if we don't go along with every debate, if we don't think that anything is sayable about us, if we object to certain things being said, we're against free speech. The irony here is that time and time again what we see is that those people who go on and on and on about free speech have two basic flaws. They don't like consequence. 
They like to be able to say what they want, yet if someone then says we don't want to work with you, they get very upset about that. Yet speech must have consequence. Speech does have consequence. And second, when trans people, when LGB people say things they don't like, calling them out, or even just talking about our own lives, we can't possibly have that. Hence, as you've seen recently in the real world, attempts to ban LGBT books from libraries all across the United States. But that goes on in this country as well. It's just a bit more under the radar and very much not reported on in the UK media. How strange. And then there's attempts to shut down drag reading events because free speech is great and trans people are against free speech until it turns to free speech for trans people. And then, well then the boot is on the other foot. Is that right? Foot is on the other boot? Oh, I don't know. In other words, the trans debate is largely an artefact of obsession by media that sensationalise, distort and misrepresent to create the stories they need to justify and perpetuate that debate. Just two last points. I was asked how allies could help. And I think the most important thing that allies can do is listen to us. Listen to us basically when we say we're under pressure, but listen to us when organisations like Transmedia Watch provide close analysis of what the press are doing. Listen to us. Come and sit in on some of our seminars. Come and sit in on our training, but listen. Second, and this is very, very important, do it for yourselves. Don't just do this for trans people, because what the media are doing to trans people they do to LGB people, they do to women, they do to people of colour, they do it to any and every minority group that they think they can get away with doing it to. So this is not just about trans. This is about what the media are doing, and it's about helping us to help yourselves. I think that's about all I wanted to say today. So without any further ado, I'm handing you back to the studio and over to Jane Fay. I hope you found that useful. If you need to know anything more, if you'd like some training, if you'd like uh, Transmedia Watch to come and give you a presentation, anything basically, drop me a line through at Jane Fay. Fay is spelt F-A-E, there's no Y in it, on Twitter or look out the Transmedia Watch site and email us. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.